Hey, welcome to part two, or part one, depending on what order you're watching this in. This is the pitch bin tutorial. My name is Plague, and if you can, I would recommend watching the transpose tutorial as well, because that'll give you an idea of what the pitch bin can do as well. You don't have to watch these in any particular order. There's just information for both on there. Like the transpose, uh, track effects and input effects A is the only thing that the pitch bend is on. And <clears throat> we can't pair this up with things like the tape echo or granular delay, just like with the transpose, but we can with track effects after the thing has already been recorded. So let's go right into the parameters, which is pitch and Bend. <laughs> Great names. So the pitch is it lets you control what octave you're playing with. And if you want to understand octaves and what that means and semitones, watch the transpose tutorial as well as the octave tutorial. Next we have bend. The bend is how much we are bending the sound towards that octave difference. So this gives us a much more granular approach to changing the note of something than the transpose does. And this is controlled by the knob as well. Another thing I want you to notice about bend is that every pitch octave is contained in the other higher values. In other words, an octave of plus one is also possible to make in an octave plus two. So it's not like it's just plus two uh, octave is your range from plus one to plus two. It's literally from the source signal two plus two or the source signal two plus three. So plus three also contains uh, two octaves and one octave of a difference within these numbers. Let's talk about my gripes with pitch bend. Let's go on a rant here. Pitch bend is uh, problematic for a lot of reasons. The MK2 has an updated algorithm on the pitch bend, so this may be less of an issue for the MK2. But for the MK1, these numbers, even these numbers, are essentially meaningless. <sighs> like, okay, so let's let's make some assumptions here. If I have plus one octave and I do a bend of 100, what do you expect that to do to the sound? You'd expect it to bend the sound or transpose the sound by one octave, like full on, this is the full effect. I have here a sine wave of a C4 note, and I'm going to pitch bend it by one octave, which would bring it up to a C5, right? It's one octave up, which Sounds like it, but it sounds a little off, right? Well, let's take a look. So I have this pitch detector here that is moving to my voice right now. Check this out. If I play this sine note, and we're going to get that C4 note. So I'm going to turn my microphone off. That is a C4 note. Great. So now if I do a transpose of plus 12, that should bring us to C5. Fantastic, we're doing great so far. Now let's do the same thing, but with pitch bend plus one octave of a bend 100. As you can see, it's slightly above. If I wanna go up one octave, I go to 97. Are you kidding me? So not even like, 100 means anything. Let's do two octaves at 100 bend. Nope, C6 is 98 on the bend. What is going on? What about negative one octave? Nope, that one's 98. This is not precise at all. Additionally, I would also think, like if if I were a human being, think that 50 would be six semitones for like, let's say a minus one octave or a plus one octave. Or for example, if I have plus two octaves or minus two octaves, I would think a 50 is an octave. But no, that is not how this works. 
So we're going to go ahead and do two octaves. I'm going to put it down to 50, so it won't be that high-pitched screeching that you heard earlier. This is what I would expect to be one octave lower, because halfway through, right? Right? Or maybe 49, if they're counting the zero, I guess, as the source signal? I, I don't know, but let's see. Let's see what that looks like on the pitch detector. Solid F sharp five. Like what? Who designed this? Okay, so then where is the octave lower? If it's a C sharp five, that's still a well above. So we have to actually go all the way down. It's this is ridiculous. Twenty seven. A bend of twenty seven gives us one octave lower with a plus two octave pitch. Why does that happen? Anyways, that's not great. But there's still a lot that we can do with the pitch bend, regardless of its faults. I will say that this effect seems much smoother than the transpose. Back in the transpose tutorial, it will we talked about it stuttering the track a little bit. This doesn't seem to be as bad on the pitch bend, but the pitch bend will still have those interference slicing and chopping that we saw. But we can disguise that with other effects. So like here we have this sound. Okay, we have a pitch bend of plus one octave just at a bend 100. So we know it's gonna not quite be an octave up, but. Okay, cool. You notice that there's that chopping. So you heard that popping that was occurring. And again, it tends to happen for like lower bends. Oh, great. Now it's doing it again. We're going to talk about this glitch later. So as I was saying, lower bend values tend to make it more choppy and worse. So I would recommend staying in like bend 100 or something that's higher up just to prevent that choppiness from happening. But you can disguise that kind of weird sounding thing with other effects like of course. This effect does sound a little different than a transpose, so whatever it's really whatever you feel like is better or more useful to you in the moment. For me, if the value is staying the same throughout or I don't need to precise semitone values, I'll, uh, then the pitch bend seems to be better and more smooth, but it, again, depends on the track. In All Day, for example, this track here, this tends to interact with the reverb much better with the pitch bend than it does with the transpose. So I'll actually start with a pitch bend of 100, and then I'll go into a transpose of essentially the same thing when I start changing the transpose values when I need it to be more precise. And I'll you can kind of hear what that sounds like. <laughs> The difference is small and it's slight, but because they're right next to each other, it's not a major inconvenience for me to just switch from the pitch bend to the transpose. Yeah, there there t does tend to be that little bit of difference. You can do a lot of the same things with this as transpose too, like the vinyl flick, flick trick and whatnot, but you are limited to one octave. What I mean by that is with the transpose, you don't have to switch anything to mess with outside of the one octave. You have two octaves of range here. With the pitch bend, if you want to mess with this somehow, you have to then go back and change the octave value to something else. So you're limited to the one octave that you're staying in. Even if you do a plus two, you can't go now down the negative from the source signal. So you can change it, of course, like at any point, but you have to go into a separate menu and change it by with your other hand. So you'd have to use two hands to change it 
with one hand being on here to change it back and forth and the other hand doing the pitch bend that way, which then you'd have to think it actually gets reversed because as you approach 100, it goes towards this value. Well, this one is gonna go towards this value, but it's going lower. So you're gonna have to basically swap like halfway through if you're gonna change it. This is a cool trick that I figured out a while back because the pitch bend and the transpose are all right next to each other. What you can do is you can set the transpose to one value, set the pitch bend to a different value, and then you can swap between them. This ostensibly gives you three notes to quickly jump to using zero assigns and being in multi-mode. So you can have the note of the transpose, you can have the note of the pitch bend, and you can have the original uh, like note that is playing. So you have one, two, three notes that you can play with. My favorite trick to do with this is to change the pitch by just kind of messing around and going back and forth between the things. So like to make this crazy nonsense, if you just go into pitch bend, you can change the octave to different things while you make different sounds to get the crazy keep it strange noises. <laughs> You're like an alien. <laughs> Another example here is like in incinerator. You can do the pitch bend and change this into whatever like bubbly noises that you want. And that sounds really cool. That way you don't really have to change anything else. You don't have to mess with the bend. So this may be one of the worst effects on the whole device um, in conclusion uh, because of how much it doesn't do what it's advertising. But there, uh, with the values not working and it also being very glitchy. <sighs> yeah, we haven't even talked about the glitches that pitch bend can cause. So while I was literally recording this, I had a glitch occur. So it doesn't so it doesn't seem as what is going on right now. Okay, do you hear my voice? What is going on? Okay, what happens when I turn this off? Test one, two. What is going on? What the hell? Okay, if I adjust this, then that, does that fix it? Excuse me? Who gave you, who told you you could do that? This is, seems to be similar to another glitch that I was going to talk about at this point in the video, which is the, I had a, I talked about a little bit in the robot tutorial that I made about pitch bend being weird with the robot and then me saying I'm, I'm unable to replicate it for some reason. Well, there it was, right there. Um, it, I don't know what causes it. I, I don't know why my audio was being weird, but it seems to be for higher octaves, like for plus one to plus four, and it does that kind of cutting thing and choppy thing, and I don't understand what the heck is going on. Uh, additionally, with pitch bend at lower values, let's see if it'll do it again while I'm trying to explain this. So with the pitch bend at lower values, oh my god, it is doing this. What the hell? Okay, well, I guess I can't talk about it while demonstrating it. Uh, so with, just imagine this is not a 44 and something lower. With pitch bend at lower values, you do get that choppiness that you heard before. Yeah, I think it's just how the algorithm is processing the sound. I, I don't know. Keep It Strange also has the jump scare glitch. I'm not going to show it here. Don't worry. Um, if you want to hear the jump scare glitch, I talk about it and show it occurring in the glitches and issues tutorial. I was terrified of... Every time I do Keep It Strange, it, I'm terrified of that occurring. It's rare, but... It is loud, very, very loud.
Um, yeah, so to keep it strange, that happens because of the pitch bend. I've localized it to it being a pitch bend problem. Oh, well, I guess that's just the way it is. So pitch bend is definitely tied, I would say, maybe. Almost tied with the beat shift. At least with the beat shift, the glitches happen more frequently. At least with the beat shift. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to bargain here. The beat shift, the glitches happen more frequently, which is why I would say the beat shift is the more glitchy effect. With pitch bend, the glitching seems to be a lot more unpredictable, uh, but also less frequent. I will say MK2 has updated the algorithm, so a lot of the may make a lot of these problems go away. But as it stands for the Mark One, it's a pretty bunk effect that we unfortunately have to just deal with. But without all those gripes, it's an, a decent effect. I much prefer the transpose as most most of us do. But let's go into a track that uses the pitch bend uh, without any glitches. <laughs>
What the fu- Oh, dude. <laughs>